Hello everyone and welcome. Today's tutorial is going to be on uh, presets in Photomatix Pro. Now I'm going to show you how to create them and also use them. But first, you know, we got to get some photos to be able to get into Photomatix Pro here. And I got three uh, bracketed photos. This tutorial is not going to be on editing these, but basically just, you know, Photomatix Pro presets. But we need some to be able to open it up anyway. So let's got these three here. Let's select them. And go down to export in the Photomatix Pro. Okay. Here we are in Photomatix Pro. Now I skipped the deghosting screen and stuff for you because that's not what we're going to cover today. But I want to go over all the presets in a little more in detail and also show you how to create your own. So let's see if we can't blow this up a little bit bigger here. So all we see is Photomatix Pro. And click on the fit button and it should make our image fit in here better. Okay. Now let's start off with the presets that they give us. You have your default, which would be the first one you come up with. It's very bland. It just gives you a low contrast, you know, non-interesting image, but it may be, you know, a good starting point for most people. Balanced is a really great one here. Uh, this is great for people who just want to do normal photographic HDRs, but don't want to get too creative with them. Just want to keep them you know, looking good and kind of almost natural, but just to get more tone out of the camera in general. Now, photographic is supposed to be photographic, but I actually find the balance to be better. This one looks very bland to me. I don't know anybody who'd really want to use this one. Neutral is just more of a neutral one. And we got some of these creative ones like Painterly, which, you know, very nice. And they have variations of it. it can look very, very nice. Give a lot of detail. And you got vibrant, enhanced, enhanced too. Now these may not look always the best on every photo. It really depends on what you've took a, a photo of. So some of these may look bad now. But later on, when you get a different image in here, uh, it may look a lot better. No, it's the real what's kind of crazy here, but you know, it's not too bad. But they have you know quite a few you know basic presets. You know, creative is always very nice looking, without being too saturated in color, but still a lot of detail. Now, I'm not going to quickly go through every one of these, but they also have some monochrome ones that are very nice. Now, if you look over here, we have two processes. You have tone mapping and exposure fusion. Now, we have different methods under each one of these. Under tone mapping, we have method. We have details enhancer, which is your basic one. This is what most of the presets come from, and the one I use the most. Contrast optimizer. And this is more for like photographic stuff. And a tone compressor one. This one's also for more photographic stuff. You know, I guess depending on what style of photo uh, you're actually using, of you know, what type of photography you're doing. Depends on which ones you really need. And but these are actually just given so that you can, you know, do the, your type of photography the best you can. Now if you click over here, exposure, exposure fusion, excuse me, they have a few in here. Now, one of these that you might want to take a look at is fusion two images. Now what this does is if you get like, for example, you took a photo of the ocean at night and the moon was out. But to get the uh, ocean to look good, you had to overexpose the moon. So then you turn around and take another photo, this time of the moon. This type of uh, uh, fusion will actually give you the best results. So if you just want to take two images, you know, fusion for two images right here is, is absolutely wonderful. So, 
you know, it's something to keep a look out of. Like I said, I use tone mapping for the most under details enhancer. Now let's go down here to our presets. All right. You have three options at the top. Now, I don't like where the save and re-import button is. This drives me up the wall because I see pretty blue button. And normally the first thing I do is click on that when this is actually the button I wanted to click on. If you click on load preset, it'll pop up and you can go through and you can actually download more presets online from various people, you know, giving out their presets. I can export mine here. And I have a few of them that I've actually created here. And they're in the presets folder. Let me see exactly where this is actually located. Yeah, to be under Photomatics Pro and stuff. You can save your own. Let's say we create our own here. Let's change this up a little bit. Let's say we want a natural plus lighting. And we'll see here. Let's just get a little creative here with it. There we go. Let's just say, say that one. I think I've already did this before, but let's say, let's save the preset is test tutorial. And you click save. And now when you click on this, if you go down through here, you'll see test tutorial as listed. So that lets you show that you can create your own presets and everything. Okay, you can actually delete the preset. If you go on here and see like a test tutorial we just you know, created, we can click on delete, gives you an alert, then gets rid of it. You know, I've already got a few in here that I use. My enhanced one, my creative one for automobiles and you know, architecture. And one I normally use for like HDR time lapse. And a few I actually tweaked, like one I use for shadow mapping to bring up details and stuff. But as you see, you know, there's quite a bit to these. Okay, let's close this out. I'm not going to save this. And let's go down here to click on batch bracketed photos. Now, one uh, great reason presets are so nice if you create a preset you can then use it like default to here is hdr time lapse because this will be where i'll be bringing in a lot of images for time lapse and this can apply a preset after you done set one of them to many many of your uh, images that you already got going and this is another tutorial all in general that i've already done so if you want to see my hdr time lapse tutorial you know, check it uh, down at the bottom. I'll put a link to it. But this is where a lot of your presets can be used if you, you know, want to do branch of focus, which makes presets so much more powerful here. And that's it, folks. I just want to show you how to, you know, create and use your own presets in Photomatix Pro. Enjoy, everyone. Take care. Hey, everyone. I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit the like button down below at the bottom. Also, don't forget to leave comments. I always look forward to everyone's comments on knowing what you like about the video and what I can do to improve them. But most importantly, if you like this type of video and enjoy this type of content, you know, hit the subscribe button. Subscribing is the best way to let me know that you like these videos and you want to see more. And when we get done, you know, hit the button and check out my website. If you want to learn more about X-Disc Photography, the blog website is the best place to go. Thanks everyone.